All right, so you're given a copy of this trust. So I am not going to keep it inside a frame. I'm going to more or less keep my work inside of there. I'm going to make this one continuous video. Um, I'm not going to re-record it, so if I'm making mistakes, hopefully I don't. Um, it's the way it is. I will try to slow down and look at that. I'm going to go moments first, then A, B, C, and then probably D to solve this truss. So I'm going to scoot this up. I'm going to grab myself a pen and some paper, and I am going to get to work on solving this. So again, you have your own picture of this, so as I scoot it up, I'm not too worried about keeping you happy to be able to see it. I'm going to let you see my work here. So I've got moments. I've got to go off of my pen. So I've got at D, I have a moment at D plus a moment at C needs to equal the moment at B. So D has a distance of 2. So I've got force of 100 times a distance of 2. Plus I've got a moment at C, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I have a force of 300 times 8, and that needs to equal my distance of 9 times my reaction force at pin B in the Y direction times my 9. So I'm going to grab out my calculator. I don't need a calculator. What am I doing? I've got 200 plus 2400 is equal to 9RBY. So I've got 2600 equals 9 times RBY. Just to make sure I do this right, I am going to grab my calculator for this one. 2600 divided by 9 gives me 288.8. So I'm just going to round that up to um, 290. I'm just going to use 290. So R B Y equals 290. Her number is going to be a little bit off going through, but I don't like writing extra numbers. I'm just trying to save myself here. So at the roller, I've got reaction force at pin B in the Y direction equal to not 900, that's where I'm getting lazy, to 90. So, all together now, on my picture, I had at D, I've got 100 down. At C, I've got 300 down. At B, I've got 290 up. So therefore, at A, I need 110 up. So I'm going to go over here, A. Reaction force at pin A in the Y direction needs to equal to 110. So that's what I got so far. So now I'm going to go with my free body diagram at joint A. So where should we go here? We got room. We will uh, keep it right here. So we're going to go to joint A. So free body diagram. I've got a pin sitting there. So I had the reaction force at A in the Y direction. We just solved as 110. I have got a member here. So I've got the force acting upon the member of A, B. That is in the X direction, and I don't know its value. And then I have the force of member A, D. That one is diagonal. Anytime I've got diagonal, I've got the two composite, one X, one Y. So I have the force of A, D, and the Y equals, I don't know. And I have force of A, D, and the X also don't know. So I've got three things to solve for. I've got to try to solve for this triangle. I've got to solve for the sum of all the forces in the X equals zero. And the sum of all the force in the Y equals zero. So what do I know? Triangle, three unknowns. The only thing I do know about my triangle from my original picture is that this is 56.31 degrees. Axes, I have one, two unknowns. Y, I have two Ys, one I know, one I don't know. This Y needs to be 110 going down. 110 going up, 110 going down. So from there, I know I'm compression. I've got to go down and to the left, so I've got to calculate F, D, X. So I know this is 110. I've got to find that X value right there, and I need to find the hypotenuse. So this is F, D, A, and this is F, D, A. 
x. So if I want fdax, that's adjacent. Uh, let's do the hypotenuse first. We'll do sine. We've been used to doing that one. So now I've got the sine of my 56.31 equal to the opposite of 110 divided by FDA. So multiply FDA over and divide. I've got FDA is equal to 110 divided by the sine of 56.31. Grab my calculator. I got 110 divided by the sine of 56.31, 132. So I've got a value here of 132 under compression. So then 110 squared plus the force of ADX squared equals 132 squared. So I've got 132 squared minus 110 squared. The square root of that gives me a value of 73. That guy right there is 73. It's going to the left because this is down. Let's go to the left to connect those two endpoints. So if this is 73 to the left, that means this one is 73 to the right. So what did I just solve for? I just solved for some different values. I'm going to go back into my bigger picture and get this. This is 73 under tension due to the fact that it was pulling to the right. And then my calculations here told me that this was about 132 under compression because it was going toward the joint itself. So now we're going to go to joint B. Joint B, we're going to start with the free body diagram at B. So at B, what do I know? I know I have the reaction force at pin B in the Y direction equal to around 290. I know I've got the force of member here BE in the X direction. I don't know its value. And I know I have a force of BC and I don't know that. That's the diagonal one. Anytime I have diagonal again, I have the force of B, C, and the Y. And I have the force of B, C, and the X. So once I get to that joint, I have a triangle I need to solve for. This is the force of B, C, which I don't know. I do know from my picture that I do know the angle of 71.565 that's my angle measure I've got some of all the forces in the X needs to equal zero some of all the forces in the Y needs to equal zero so as I look at this same things happening that happened today I've got 290 up which means I need 290 down so I'm looking here this guy's got to be 290 down applying compression meaning that one's got to be to the right so I know this guy right here is 290. So if I want to find that hypotenuse, I've got, again, the sine of 71.565 equals 290 over uh, force acting upon member BC. So 290 divided by the sine of 71.565 gives me the force of BC, which is equal to, grab my calculator, Plugged in at 290 divided by the sine of 71.565. I get a nice 305. We'll round up to 306. So I've got 306. 290 squared plus the force of BCX squared equals 306 squared. So I'll take 306 squared minus 290 squared. Square root of that, oops, square root of that answer. I get a nice looking 96. So I got 96.6, .6, or I'll just go 97. I don't like decimals. So here now I have 96 under compression going to the right. 
So what does that mean? This guy right here has got to be 96 going to the left, applying tension. That's there. So if I go back into my big drawing, what did I just solve for? What did I just solve for? I just found BC. I just found BC to equal right around 306. 306 of compression because it was going down towards that joint of B. And then I've got a value of B. Or uh, what do I got here? EB. EB. I just calculated a value close to 90. Six. So this is 96 under tension because it was pulling away. This one was going towards compression, so that 96 has got to change with there. Sweet. Running out of paper, but that's okay. Next one we're going to go to is joint C. So I'm going to go jump here to joint C. There's a lot going on there. I should give myself more work, but I'm going to see what I can do. So at joint C, I've got the force at C in the Y direction equal to 300. I have the force of member CB, which we just calculated before, um, which was equal to, if I look back at my sheet, I used 306. From that, there were two different components to make that up. Here we calculated before, this was 290, and this one was 96. Then I have another diagonal at C. I've got this diagonal right here. Anytime I diagonal, I got the two components. I don't know anything about this one, but I knew, do know that's the force of member C, E. I've got the force of member C, E, and the X, and force of C, E, and the Y. And then my other one I don't know is the force of C, D, and the X direction that's there. So what do I need to do? I need to go ahead and solve. I've got two different triangles I've got to solve. I've got to look for X's and I've got to look for Y's and see what I can come up with. So triangle, that one's solved. This one I don't know anything about. X's, I have one, two unknowns. Y's, I have two of them. One I know, one I don't. Meaning this S-C-E-Y needs to be a value of 300 going up. Now what starts to happen? I've got a side of a triangle and an angle. So if I go back to my sheet, I now know that that side of that triangle is 300. According to my sheet, this is a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle means this guy is also 300. So I can put this up here, that's also 300. Meaning I've got 300 squared plus 300 squared and then the square root of that is giving my, my hypotenuse of 424. Oops, see, I got lazy. I had 300, 290. So what does this one actually be? It's not 300, it's not 300, not 300, not 300, 10. 10 and 10. This guy's gotta be value of 10. So I've got 10 squared plus 10 squared. So I've got the square root of 200. Gives me my 14.14. So this guy is equal to 14.14. Glad I caught that. So this guy's 10. This guy's also 10. As I'm going through, this 306 from previously was compression. So this is going up and to the left. So 290 up, 110 up. So to connect those two points, this guy's also going to the right. So this is 10 to the right, that's 96 to the left. So I need a total 96 to the left, so nine, or total. So 96 minus 10 gives us 86. So this guy here is equal to, and that's it then, 86, that is there. 86. Surprise. You're good. I uh, told them in the beginning of the video that I would be uh, making stuff up as I go, so you're good. All right, so that's joint C. We've got one more joint, right? Because we've got to solve for this guy right there. Because we also have this one, which is 14. 
And what do we say? This guy is going up because the 290 and the up to get to the 300, so that's got to be compression. So we've got to go one more place. 